so this is the finished part for that drilling operation clip you just saw. This is going to be the new tool rack for the CNC router. And it's pretty late in the night, so I apologize if I misspeak or say um too many times or start rambling, but I really just want to make this short video and share all the game-changing things that I learned about drilling on a CNC router with a high-speed spindle. I'm just very happy with how this part turned out. I have a production part coming up that I feel very confident about since it has a few drilled holes in it, and I'm no longer worried about that. So I'm going to start with all of the things on the router. So the tooling and the lubrication, the uh, air assist, and then I'm gonna go over to Fusion 360 and show you guys the cutting parameters that I used. So tooling first, uh, I ended up using a single flute cutter, which are awesome. They seem to have an ideal geometry for sort of the axial plunge milling operations. I think that has to do with the cutter face at the end of the tool. As you can see, it's got a nice rake to it and a polished edge. And so overall, um, yeah, single flute cutters are great. <laughs> um, I've had the most luck with them. They cut like butter. Uh, you see machines like Datrons using them all the time, and there's a reason for that. They're ideally suited for high-speed machining. Uh, the second thing I want to talk about is actually, uh, if you saw during the clip, you could hear that the cut was starting to not sound so good near the end of the operation. And that was actually because of my poor choice in tooling. I should have used this one right here. It's the same tool, but with a 17 millimeter flute length. And so if I put, so this is a 10 millimeter flute length and the deepest hole was 9.3 millimeters, I believe. And so if I put it in the hole, and I don't think my camera is going to be able to focus, but basically there's a gap of maybe like three millimeters for chip evacuation. And so I should have used a longer flute length. And just to guys give you guys an idea, these are the chips that were coming off of the cut. So it's not going to want to focus, but here you go. As you can see, these are very thick chips. And if it was not for the peck milling operation that I was doing, the cuts would have turned out to be a disaster. But I'm gonna talk about the peck milling parameters later. The next thing I wanna talk about is lubrication. So if you're the type that loves huffing WD-40 while they're machining, you're gonna love this. This is a three to one ratio of kerosene to olive oil. Uh, I'm just a hobbyist, so you know, take my advice with a grain of salt, but this is some of the best stuff that I've used for cutting. It is disgusting, it reeks, it is impossible to clean off your machine. But when it comes to lubricity, it is absolutely phenomenal. Uh, it is damn near impossible to weld the chips when using that fluid, um, you know, assuming your speeds and fees are within range. Um, yeah, cannot say enough good things about this. When you need to get a cut done, this is the stuff to do it. Next thing I want to talk about is air assist. So I actually turned off my air assist for this operation. So. My air assist, I like to run it right up to the cutter and at a very high flow rate for the best chip evacuation. But what I found with the drilling operation is that, especially when I was getting more than a few millimeters, like about quarter inch, six millimeters plus deep into the hole, I found that the cut actually sounded worse when I had the air assist turned on. And so when I was milling, I don't know if you saw in the video, but the chips uh, with no air assist, we're just flying out of the hole. Uh, these chips right here, they were flying all over the place. And you can easily see how with a cutter like this, with the helix angle and everything, the chips would have a very easy time evacuating the hole. What the air assist was actually causing was it was making it harder for the chips to naturally fly out of the hole with the cutting forces and all of that involved in the drilling operation. And so I ran this um, without any air, without the mist, just some cutting fluid. And uh, yeah, it turned out great. Um, I also ran a few holes uh, dry without the cutting fluid and they also turned out great. So these, just to give, give you guys another view, these are the chips that were coming off. They're sort of like little springs. And uh, yeah, these were having a great time just flying out of the hole and not causing any issues. 
And then finally, I want to talk about the PEC drilling parameters. So I used a PEC drilling operation, uh, a chip breaking with a partial retract. So the pecking depth was 0.2 millimeters, so it's very shallow. And that was really the key to pulling off this operation, I feel, was the very shallow pecking depth. And looking at the size of the chips, I think I could have even gone shallower with the pecking depth because they were decently sized. And so I'm thinking maybe for the next operation, I'll try a pecking depth of maybe 0.1 millimeters. And in order to maybe speed up the operation, rather than having a chip break distance, of 0.5 millimeters, which is how much the tool retracts from the cut before re-engaging again for another 0.2. So, and also I had a full retract every three millimeters. And especially as you're getting deeper and deeper into the hole, that full retract was very important, I found. Um, I ran the spindle, so infusion is at 24,000 RPM, and it sounded pretty good at 24,000 RPM. Uh, I did lower the speed eventually. I, uh, I'm gonna be honest, I don't remember why. I think it was because of my SFM calculations. I'm not sure, but in UCCNC, I had the cut set at 19,000 RPM and it was still good at that. So long story short, very shallow pecs, um, a full retract every few millimeters and uh, yeah, I said a lot of things, so hopefully some of this helps you guys out. Um, it definitely is, definitely helped me out a lot. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching.